It says, Lord, Lord, is not of God, and all this garbage on television that called itself religion is not of God. Hello? You say, well, well, no, the truth is the word, and the word is what God said, and what God said is what we need to understand, because it's what will deliver us, bring us out of darkness, bring us out of despair. It will establish us and put our feet upon a solid rock. Our homes would be a place of joy. Our children would be stable and secure. Our future would be secure if we can only acknowledge the fact that in the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. Uh, David said, I am fearfully and wonderfully made, and God created us out of the dust of the earth. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Hallelujah. Mallory's going to take biology next semester, right? What do you think? Chemistry, biology? Chemistry. Uh, chemistry. Chemistry. You know, you can't uh, understand the completeness of chemistry without understanding in the beginning God. He said, we can't do it. No, you can't. Why are my educational institutions in this condition that they're in? You've got to have a foundation for what you believe. There is a beginning and there is an ending. Glory to God. And my Bible <coughs> declares that Jesus Christ is not only the way, the truth, and the life, uh, but he is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And we are created of the dust of the earth. Genesis 2, 7, and the Lord formed man of the dust of the ground. What is man? 96 base elements, chemistry, that's what you're going to learn. 96 natural elements. Chemicals, I believe that is, right? And about uh, several now that are man-made elements in the world. Huh? And, and whenever they take a body and cremate it, it turns what? To ashes? They put us out there in a the hole, put us in a, a cement vault, and the worms and the bugs and all still get to us. Dust thy art and dust thy shalt return. Glory to God. I said, thus thou art, and thus thou shalt return. Is that, that what the, the book teaches us? Yes. Hallelujah. And, and we know by faith. We understand by faith. Glory to God. We, we hear. Now, what are we supposed to be hearing? What Jesus taught the apostles. Anything else is a lie. Anything else, don't let them come in your house. Isn't that what the book said? Yes. We are to believe what the apostles saw, experienced, and felt, and what they wrote down, and what we read and preach and teach, is what the apostles said that Jesus Christ did in their presence while they heard him, and while they witnessed him, they wrote it down, Blessed are those that are able to read what you've experienced and believe what you've said. Glory to God. Amen. Yes. Dust is powder or gray or clay or earth or mud. Don't make a difference how many millions of dollars you spend trying to pamper it up, pump it up, uh, use all that their new, uh, uh, what is it? Surgery on cosmetic surgery on plastic surgery. You know, but it, it's still dust, still dirt. Glory to God. And you know what's amazing? Whenever you leave out of that dirt, and see, you, you're not dirt. You manifested in that dirt. Your spirit. God breathed into that dirt spirit. And what happens when the spirit leaves that dirt? It turns back to dust. Spirit goes to the God that gave it, and the body turns back into dust. Amen? Now, what happens if you don't have a born-again spirit? And you die without having that redemption. Amen? 
that no hope left. You must be born again of what? Of water? That's natural. Of water and spirit. The water is the death. The spirit is the life. How do you get the spirit? You get the spirit by obeying the death of the flesh. He that believeth and is baptized. It's not some kind of a religious, uh, the, the nuts have made it something undesirable, but the Bible said, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, glory to God. And this term saved so, so, it doesn't mean it going to heaven. It means preserved, protected, provided for all of the goodness God wants you to have. And then whenever we reach the end of our journey in this flesh, then we reap the eternal rewards that God got for us. The spirit, the water is the death, the spirit is the life. What is the spirit? What being filled with the Holy Ghost? Hallelujah. Not speaking in another old tongue. Not speaking more tongue than all of it. No. What, what is being filled with the Holy Ghost? It's having the word of God planted in your heart and having faith in that word, and then it becomes fountains of living water that spring up out of your innermost being because he said, my words, they are spirit and they are life. We are buried with him in baptism in the death, and we are raised up in him to walk in newness of life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, I'm going to have to quit. He knoweth our frame. Romans 15, 29. I'm already five minutes over, I guess. Romans 15, 29. Lord, I wish I'd have comprehended this 50 years ago. Knowledge of knowing that you know what God's word says, it's going to produce what it said it will. There's not somebody out here, some mystical TV evangelist, and I've gone all over the country preaching, laying on hands on people, and, and going through the same thing. Uh, you know, that's, it's when the word comes alive in you. When the word becomes flesh, when the word becomes manifested in our flesh. Christ in you, the hope of the world. Whenever we can actually believe, we heard it, now, if we can believe it and act upon it, that it's not made, the temple made with hands, but ye are the temple of the Holy Ghost, uh, and God will do what he said that he'd do. Glory to God. All right, let's, let's not pray. I'm sure that when I come unto you, I shall come in the fullness of the blessings of the gospel of Christ. How tragic it is that we have today lost sight of the fullness of the blessing of the gospel. I've had good meaning people to tell me, my Lord, we had such a great service last Sunday. Preacher didn't even have to preach. What'd you do? Oh, we got all emotional excited and I thank God and we went on for five hours just dancing and jumping and shouting. And... You know how many times that if I came home to eat supper and my wife was in the kitchen just jumping and shouting and dancing and rolling the floor and saying, well, I got so happy I didn't have time to make you a meal. I'm not against that. I already talked, I mean, took all the shout out of you, you know what I mean? But I'm just at, a, a, asking you if we, you know, you, the church is eating on emotion instead of that which, you know, my word. Is spirit in my in, in life, isn't that right? Yeah.